Let's say you want to create a Node.js project based on Express and MongoDB. How best can you structure it to ensure that it is manageable and scalable? In this video, we'll consider some best practices that we can follow to achieve that. And this will apply to both JavaScript and TypeScript based projects. So in a fresh Node.js project like what I have, we'll start by initializing the project into a Git repository. With that in place, we can make use of a .gitignore file to hide our environment variables and other secrets in our application, especially when we share our code on platforms like GitHub. Now we install the necessary initial packages like Express and Nodemon. With the installation complete, we start the project with two root directories, the env directory which will contain our environment variables and the source directory which will contain all our source code. Under the env, we need a sub file to store the variables. We can start with the local.env file for our local config variables. When it comes to running the app locally, we need to create a script using the nodemon package and specify the path to our index file and environment variables. Nodemon does this using the r flag followed by .env slash config, which we can then follow with our index file and the env file. Now in the source directory, we'll first create a config directory. This will house the configurations for the project like connection to a database. So for instance, we can connect to our database in the db.js file. Now I have the code base for a different project here and I'll be making reference to it to show you how the structure can be used. The most important thing in this video is understanding the structure of the project, which is being demonstrated. And it's not about understanding the actual codes in it. So you should follow along even if you don't understand the code. Now we need index and server.js files. If you are using TypeScript, the extension will be .ts. The server file prepares the server by taking in the config files and setting up the express app with the necessary middlewares. This is then exported to be used. We'll come back later to this file to explain something very important. After the server file, the index file now brings in the prepared server and sets the port details which can be used in a function to start the server. Now we want to make logical separations of the features that our project will have and we'll call these separations domains. Ideally, each domain should have some operations which can be performed on it like adding, deleting, and fetching. Each domain will have a directory in the domain's directory. For example, if you are working on a login system, you can break it into the domain's email verification, forgot password, user login, and sign up. For a shop application, the domains can be products, suppliers, product types, among others. In each domain, we will have four initial files, index, controller, model, and routes. Using Express Router, we will set up all the routes that a particular domain will support in the route file. The routes will make use of functions which reside in the controller file. So if a route adds something to the database, the actual database communication will be handled by a function in the controller and not by the route itself. Also, we expect each domain to be associated with a particular collection in our database. So we create a model for it in the model file. This is what all the operations in the controller will be based on. If this is a TypeScript based project, we will create an additional types.ts file which will house all the types and interfaces particular to this domain. Now in the index file, we just import the router for the domain and export it. This will make it a simpler import when we want to use it. Knowing that when the main file in a directory is the index file, you don't need to specify the name when you are importing it. Now sometimes, two or more domains will perform similar functionalities along the lines of their operations. In that case, we have to extract the functionality into a function and keep it in a util folder. Util here means utilities. For example, multiple domains in my project send emails, so I have a utility for that which I call send email. This contains all the configurations for sending email and has a function which accepts the details to be sent as the email. The function is then exported. Also, we generate random numbers for pins, so we have another utility for that. So basically, the idea is that you have to identify the overlapping functions, extract them into files, and import them to be used appropriately. Once you have the routes for all the domains that we created, we need to register a base name for each domain. This is the name or endpoint which will precede the route names that we've created. So in the source directory, we need a routes directory, and it will have an index file to keep this organized. This will be an express router and we'll call the use method to register the base name for all the domains that we created. This will take the individual routers for the domains as arguments to complete it. 
the router will then be exported after everything. Now at this point, we need to expose this route to the server. And we'll do that by importing the routes in this file in the server file. We'll then pass it to the express server app through the use method, which should enable the server to recognize the route. Now if you're wondering whether having a lot of files make it even more difficult to maintain the code base, the answer is no, it won't. It's rather easier to maintain this way, since each file has a very specific purpose that it serves, and we don't have one general and big file doing everything in the app. A template for this project structure and the code used for demonstration be available for download using the link below the like button. Select one of the videos on your screen for more to the point code and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.